take our gins called uh, the Divide. And I was just at Montreal and it had this beautiful looking night and I asked him how he did it. And he, he said, well, we shot a day for night. And I was like, what? I mean, I thought that was like, just like that, those old cowboy movies that you would see that it was done so poorly and you know. And uh, he, he did his with film. His actually looks better than mine, but you can see that this really turned out well for us. So everything was shot during the day and they just set different ga uh, gauges on the camera and you know, then in post they, play with it, and that's not my field, but, you know, I knew it was going to look like this. It looked awesome, man. Part two to that question. Like, okay, you, man, you've been in some badass movies. I mean, you kicked Terminator's ass. You kicked the man's ass. Now I'm not asking you to say it. What do you think you want to direct the first time, man? I mean, that's just awesome. Well, you know, I just, uh, I, you know, I worked with Robert Rodriguez, you know, doing, and, uh, uh, you know, Robert, actually Jim Cameron said to me, you know, uh, you know, the thing about Robert Rodriguez, he said the thing is brilliant about Robert Rodriguez, and uh, I don't think Jim throws that word around very often when talking about people. And he said the thing is brilliant about Robert Rodriguez is he just doesn't believe he can't do something. He just doesn't, you know? And uh, I kind of remembered that quote from Jim. And working with Robert Rodriguez, I would talk to him about filmmaking. He would say, well, just go, you know, write something and go shoot it, Michael. That's the only way you're going to learn, you know what I mean? Because I'd ask him about shots and this this and then he just said so uh when i was doing uh, this movie the divide i was up in winnipeg and i saw a kid reading a book towards the end of the movie he's reading, reading rebel without a crew that's the robert rodriguez book and i saw that and i thought fuck it i'm just gonna go make some cheap movie you know and on my on just on me alone i couldn't raise a lot of money but i could raise, raise some of the movie I had to raise some of the money, uh, I mean some money, and very little, actually. <laughs> and uh, so uh, there was an old script that she found for me and uh, that I'd read, and it needed a lot of work, but at the time they told me they had money, so I was kind of interested because they had money. Then the money fell out, so I had no interest for it anymore. And then she, had some, she introduced me to a guy who wanted to make a movie, and that was the guy who played the bad guy. And uh, Ryan, Ryan Honey, he, he, he had some money, and so uh, I, he wanted to make a movie about Burt Lancaster back in the 20s. I said, how much money do you have? He said, so, yeah, and I, and I said, dude, you don't have enough for fucking, you know, uh, rentals for your uh, uh, elephants back in the 1920s. You know? Nobody wants to see that movie anyway, so, uh, yeah, don't put my name on it, you can't, you know. So, but then I remembered him and basically I took this script that was a page one rewrite and his money and in a three week period of time rewrote the script and did uh, uh, pre-production. So we were casting up, crewing up, uh, writing the script and uh, um, uh, doing set contracts and lo location scouting and props and, and cameras and all that stuff. And we did that during the three weeks that I wrote the script. And so nobody really had the script when we were in pre-production. They were just following me around. And I, we're going to need this. And we need some cars over there. And I need this and that. And everybody was pulling their hair out. And then as soon as I finished the script, we started shooting it. And we shot it in 12 days. Uh, Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. I can't tell you the budget. I love to tell you the budget. If you, go, if you go to uh, IMDb, you can look up the budget. But, um, I mean, he's never done a movie for under a million dollars, and it's substantially under a million dollars. So where did you shoot that? Malibu, Malibu Hills, Pink Canyon, and Burbank. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, we're in the process of, uh, of, 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 of distribu distributors looking at it right now. And off we have offers on the table, and, you know, uh, this year will be the fourth audience that has ever seen it. But you can go to uh, uh, www.grindhousevictim.com and you can see it's, you know, we've got like three reviews so far. They're all fucking stellar and everybody seems to love it. And I, I just feel very lucky that, uh, you know, things kind of went our way when we were shooting it. So um, that's the story on it. Any other questions? Yeah. Right. Yes, you. The music is, some of the music is right now available to purchase. If you go to, um, if you Google Randy Chance music, um, Kyle's theme when he's driving up can be purchased. Uh, if you go to grindhousethevictim.com, there's gonna be a list of artists and you'll be able to go to their websites and, and purchase the music. 
eventually there will be an album to purchase. Those are the individual artists. One, one is Randy Chance, and then there's a list. There's a girl named Julia Michaels who's 16 who wrote that Screaming Beauty song. She's 16. Um, and then we have a guy named Jihan Wen who's, who did uh, about three of Jim Cameron's uh, underwater stuff. Uh, three of Jim Cameron's underwater was He was the composer who did the music all around everything. And I'm not sure what, what the deal is going to be with that, but the songs are purchasable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, our editor uh, uh, is kind of a first-time editor, uh, I would say. Uh, uh, he, I work with him very closely, um, and the workhorse. He really, really, uh, you know, you find out when you're kind of in the trenches when you're doing a little movie like this. You know, who's a man, and who's a mouse? And he was really a man. I mean, he really, you know, I'll stick with him the rest of my life. You know, I go to battle with this guy because he was like right there all the time and did other people's jobs that weren't doing their jobs in, in the post in area, you know, and it was very, very helpful. And, uh, you know, I, it's interesting that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, if you read Rebel Without a Q, Robert will talk about this a lot, of a lot of times. So we had a lot of corrupt film, which means that they can't can't get the uh, the, the, the not film, but the, the data off the camera onto the computers, and, and they call it corrupt film and stuff. So, like in that last scene, we, last scene where they you discover that I may or may not be the uh, uh, the bad guy or the, the serial killer. Um, uh, you know, we had 25 corrupt shots that we had to work around. So a lot of the cuts were made just out of necessity. There are a lot of cuts in this movie that were made out of necessity because things didn't look right. There were things, you know, a dog running in the background. or You know, just there were a lot of cuts in this movie that were just kind of had to be made because they had to be made. But uh, I worked closely with him and, and, and we're going to work together again. But he's uh, relatively a newcomer. Another thing is, if you go to BlancBeanProductions.com or even just go to YouTube and look up the making of the victim, you can see not the whole thing that's going to be on the DVD, but you can see about 20 minutes, and you can see Michael yelling a lot at everybody. Any questions? Yes. Yes. IMDb. IMDb. Go there and you can vote. Give it a one out of ten. Whatever you think that it's worth, give it that. Give it a ten out of ten. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The sequel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I I think I got lucky with this one to tell you the truth. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, I am, I am, but I think I got lucky with this one. I really do. Things fell into place, and things just, you know, this, if I, if we, if we make a good, if we, if we write a good strong, I got a good sequel uh, uh, treatment, and not sure that we can write the uh, the script, but uh, uh, I kind of like showing up and then being told to go to my trailer and hang out there for a couple hours, and uh, you know, we'll call your order already. Yeah, here's your what. Can I take your breakfast order? All that kind of stuff. Uh, a little bit different than showing up at 5.30 going, where the fuck is everybody? Hey, man. Oh, it's time six yet. Okay. I hate to break this up, but uh, seriously, we got the Thank piece. you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. I'm not sure.